Hello. And welcome. I don't believe that we've met before, have we? No matter. Hello people, this is the channel and today I've got a review video for you. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. Um, before I jump into the review, I just want to point out two things. A, there are spoilers ahead, so if you haven't played the game or you don't want to know what happens in the game until you've played it, do not watch forward. Secondly, this is my first ever review, so I'm going to be doing this blind. Uh, I was thinking of doing, you know, talking about the story, then the graphics, and then the characters, but fuck that. It's 2021. Let's let's throw the rule book out of the way. Let's just talk about the game, uh, and then yeah, we'll we'll just see what happens. Hopefully, I remember to mention everything that I want to talk about. But let's jump in. So yes, I'm going to be talking about Little Hope, which is the game which is fronted by uh, Will Poulter. Fucking spider bit me, David. What? Where? Where? Where did it happen? Bit me on my balls. On my fucking balls, on my balls, on my fucking balls! Who plays uh, Anthony, Andrew and Abraham. So in traditional Supermassive Games fashion, they've given you a survival horror game with a linear path uh, where you can either just go down and follow the story right to the end or you can venture out and find the little secrets like the postcards and the articles which will give you premonitions of what to come later on in the game or articles will give you a better um, understanding of the story um, so for example in the boot of a car you find an article to find out that uh, Anthony actually survived the house fire and became the bus driver um, but what I want to talk to you first about is the ending of the story I, I would talk about the other stuff but the the ending of the story, um, I don't think I'm a massive fan of the ending. Uh, the reason for that being is, you know, Man and Badan already did the, uh, oh, the whole thing wasn't real, it was actually just a hallucinogenic thing. Um, and this time, uh, yeah, it did seem a bit weird that there were demons appearing in the real world, so it was kind of a giveaway that the thing wasn't real. Um, so they've sort of reused that a little bit, which I wasn't really too, you know, keen on. Uh, and towards the end of the game, you try so hard to uh, get all the characters to survive, uh, just for you know, if you made certain choices, they die anyway. And then you just think, oh, well, I'm so glad I made all that effort to make them survive. Um, a, a massive complaint. I do not like that. I do not like that at all. Um, I'll tell you for why. I played the game again after my Let's Play, link in the description if you haven't seen it. But I played the game again with my brother, um, and this time knowing that making certain choices in the dialogue options um, determine who survives and who dies. I tried my hardest to be the best people. Obviously every single character has its own, like uh, for instance John is a leader. So I tried to be a leader, I tried to be, you know, as nice as possible to everyone, so like there's no sort of, uh, no sort of sins or any demons for him. Um, and I tried that with every single character following their traits. The problem I have is when I played with my brother, I tried to make it so everyone survives and I still had, I had Tanya still die. I have no idea why. I know it obviously shows you, but it doesn't make it obviously clear that your dialogue options will determine who lives and who dies. It doesn't deter. It doesn't tell you which dialogue options will, you know, unlock the padlocks at the top of the screen to make sure that they survive. And I had John die on my second playthrough, even though he lived at the start. And I tried my hardest to change stuff to make it obviously different. With John, I would have done exactly what I did in the first place to make him survive, but he died this time around. So, pfft, I don't know. The second thing to do with the, the story is obviously Vince. Obviously, he's walking around, you know, going, Hey! Hey! So, with Vince, on my playthrough, on my Let's Play, link in the description if you haven't seen it, um, I... I shot at him and he got angry but then when I explained to him hey dude there was someone behind you we've lost people he was understanding and he didn't call the police on me in the end with when I played with my brother I didn't shoot at him and he was pissed off with me and at the end he called the police on me 
getting shot at, not getting shot at. It, it seems a bit backwards, and I just, I just didn't like it. It just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Another thing I want to talk about is the ending. So at the end of my playthrough, and at the end of the uh, playthrough that I did with my brother, we obviously said that Carson was to blame. Sorry, Carver. He was to blame for all of this. He was the one that was, you know, driving the pitchfork into people, making sure all these executions happen. Um, but you literally show the judge the satanic Bible, and all you see is he gets dragged away, and that's the last thing you see of him, which it just doesn't bring closure to that story. And it just doesn't sit well with me. Like, I want to know what happened to him. I want to know, you know, did he get punished? Did he get executed? Did he get let free? What the hell is going on with Carver, man? I, like, I have absolutely no idea. And it just doesn't sit well with me. You could argue, oh, it's because there's a sequel coming. There's no sequel coming. So, yeah. So, the story's all backwards. It's not easy at all to, you know, determine who's going to die, who's going to live until right at the end when it's too late to do anything about it. There's no closure to the story, which I didn't like, um, so it doesn't really sit well with me, to be honest. Um, compared to Man and Badan, I think I prefer the story. The story, I was really invested in it. Uh, is there replay value? Um, I am... After... During my playthrough with my brother, I was getting a little bit bored midway through um, and the fact that I had less people survive the second time round when I was trying to make them all live just don't know um, so yeah the replay value even though it's de designed to be played multiple times I was getting a bit bored on my second playthrough so take that what it is obviously I know with you guys you might play it you might love it you might play it again and again and again but for me I was getting bored on my second playthrough so the fact it was designed that way just yeah it doesn't sit well with me um, but what I will say though is the graphics are absolutely amazing on the game um, they did a really good job at creating a nice dingy boggy haunted town like anything from the actual foggy forest to the dingy cabins they did an absolutely amazing job at creating that creepy atmosphere um, so I really applaud them for that and the characters once again they were motion captured so it was only going to go well anyway um, but the characters themselves apart from the graphics I think they were a little bit robotic personally uh, so like they were rea reacting to dialogue options um, how a normal person wouldn't seemed a bit forced and wooden um, but, but you know apart from that I think the characters are really well flushed out you could tell that there was definitely um, their personalities were really coming into play. You start off the game hating people like Angela, but towards the end of the game, I absolutely loved loved her humour. Uh, even when you're pointing a gun at her, she goes uh, all funny. Point that goddamn thing at someone else, will you? It really, really impressed me. Um, saying that, though, when you're playing as the characters, I don't really feel like they give too much of an input into the story. So, like, you could play as, you know, Andrew one minute, Angela the next, but, you know, you don't feel like you're actually playing a different character. You're just pointing um, someone, pointing someone in the right direction and, you know, waiting until a cutscene happens. So, talking about that, the game itself, it seems a bit... I know it had the prologue, I know it had, you know, going back into the 1600s, and you've got present day. So I loved the fact that there's three timelines. But when you look back at the game. And I have watched back my playthrough. I've seen other playthroughs. Just to see you know, if it was just me that was getting uh, a couple of problems. Or you know, just interested in how other people were playing the game. But when you flush down to it. It's literally go to this place. Something happens. Then you go down a pathway. Or sorry the foggy road. To another place. Something happens, then you go to another place, then you go to another place. It just seemed a bit, uh, it seemed a bit boring when you put it like that. It, it broke it up a bit that they sent you back to the 1600s, that was great. But back in present day, it's literally, go to this uh, museum. Okay, now let's go to the police station with a couple of jump scares in between. 
which the jump scares were pretty pretty uh, predictable in this game I thought like you could really tell when they were going to happen when something was going to happen like in some cases you have random characters just standing around uh, and you you could tell that once you get to that character something would happen um, so I think it was very predictable I think Until Dawn and maybe Man and Badan handled jump scares a bit better which is sort of what makes the game um, is there anything else that I wanted to add to this? Um, yeah, so you go to the museum, you go to the police station, you go to the witch trails, and it just seemed like here, there, here, there, with some stuff to break it up. Um, I think I've mentioned everything that I wanted to mention. Um, what I will say is, little fun fact, if you've managed to stay and listen to me whittle on, a fun fact is, if you Google actor with the eyebrows then Will Poulter comes up just a little fun fact for you so what do I think of the game as a whole then so I think it was a really good game I think there's some stuff that were better in the previous game uh, sort of like the jump scares um, but yeah the the eeriness and the characters were well thought out I think Until Dawn done everything a bit better so it hasn't quite topped Until Dawn um, but apart from that, I think I think it did a really good job. Um, so I am going to give it a six out of ten because it wasn't perfect. It was boring in places. It was designed to be multiple choice, uh, sorry, multiple playthroughs. But I got bored after the second one, as I mentioned a couple of times. So I think I know they're they're bringing out a couple more. I think I heard there's eight. Eight uh, Dark Anthology episodes, sorry, games coming out. So, what do I think of as a whole? So, I think it did. It was an absolutely amazing game. I really enjoyed the story. However, I don't think it quite topped Until Dawn. I think it's it's just below it. Um, it was designed to be played multiple times. I got bored in my second playthrough. It's a bit, you know, here and there, darting backwards and forwards. Um, but the characters I loved. Story I loved. Um, but for me, I think it's going to be a 6 out of 10, um, just because I think it could it could be vastly improved. There was no closure to the story. Absolutely hated the fact that the characters weren't real. Um, even though that yeah they weren't real, but I, d I really did enjoy the characters. I don't, I just don't agree with how they got rid of them. Um, but a massive massive plot twist at the end. I was not expecting the bus driver to actually be Andrew. Or Anthony. I do love how they kept all the names. So, like, you know, Will Poulter's characters are um, Andrew, Anthony, Abraham. Angela's characters were Angela, Anne, and Amy. Um, you got John, Joseph, and. John, Joseph, and. Pass. But yeah, 6 out of 10. Really enjoyed the game. Hope you enjoyed this review, people. I'm sorry if there was no structure to it. This is the first time me doing this, so I just wanted to ramble in front of the camera just to let you know what I thought of the game uh, because I did think that I wanted to voice my opinion. If you did like it, if you agree with me, if you didn't agree with me, if you wanted to share your thoughts, place them in the comment box below. I will read all your comments. I will reply to them. Um, and I, yeah, I'm just really interested to know what you thought of the game. Uh, let me also know what you thought of me doing a review because I can review other games or if this was just a bit of a, a mess and you don't want to see any more reviews from me then that's also fine. But I hope you enjoyed this video people. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to play next or if I'm going to do a playthrough, just a couple of videos talking to you guys, I don't really know. Uh, if you've got any ideas, put them down in the box below. Uh, if I do make your idea, I'll give you a shout out in the video because uh, I know that you know that might be a, a cool little thing. Um, but thanks for watching, people. I'm the Chapinator, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.